So we have to adapt to kingdom thinking. Kingdom thinking. We have to say, okay, God, your word says I'm not to worry about what I'm going to eat. Instead of us looking at the things of the world, we now have to program ourselves and say, okay, Father, you tell me that I am to seek first the kingdom. Show me. Help me. Sunday of a new year. I don't know about you, but I'm past the point of making resolutions because I have a pathway behind me. It's sort of like the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Well, the life of my life is paved with resolutions over and over. It's usually the same resolutions that I didn't accomplish the year before that for some reason I think I'm going to be able to accomplish the next year. But here we have an opportunity as we look at this new year, the very first day, January 1, 2023, is we have an opportunity to adhere to the Word of God. Dean read that for us in Matthew chapter 6. And it is also repeated in Luke chapter 12. And I want to read just a snippet of it, if I can, because my eyes, I agree with you, Dean. Too much food and too much other stuff, I guess. Uh, not enough sleep and different things. The eyes are not doing as well as they have been. But anyway, again... God is talking in Luke chapter 12, just like he did. Jesus is teaching his disciples, and he's talking about the lilies of the field and what you're going to eat and what you're going to drink and where you're going to live. Those are the basic necessities of life. And even as we prayed this morning, our Father who art in heaven, we prayed, give us this day our daily bread, didn't we? We prayed to forgive our enemies and to protect us. There are those things that we need divine intervention for. But here in Luke chapter 12, I'm going to begin with verse 29. So do not seek what you will eat and what you will drink, and do not keep worrying. All right, that's our first stumbling block for this year. Because we have a tendency to do this, but God is telling us, don't worry. For the nations of the world strive after these things. What things? The food, the clothes, what we will drink, where we will live. He says the nations strive after those things. And, and a lot of times we strive too because we don't know that there is a difference. And then he goes, but. And anytime you see that word but, there's a new existence. There's a new potential. But your father knows that, you're, that you need these things. Mm -hmm. Now, I know most of us in this community, because I grew up in this community, I, and, and none of us were greatly wealthy in this community. We lived off the land. We worked and worked hard for what we had. But there is a difference between gathering and producing. There is a difference in the kingdom of God and in the way of the world. He said, but your heavenly father knows that you have need of these things or that you need these things. How many of you had to beg your parents to feed you if it was dinner time? Now, in between meals, yes. Get out of here. You'll ruin your supper. I know about that. But how many of you had to beg your parents to feed you if it was time to eat and you were truly hungry? How many of you had to earn your place at the table? But yet, so many times, we transfer that type of mindset. We come to God with begging. 
We, for the very things we need. Gary Cassie, pastor up in New Albany, Ohio, talks about when he was sent to the nations that he was talking to a church in a, a foreign country, a third world country. And he said, how many of you prayed and fasted that the lights would be on when you came to church today? Did any of you worry about the lights being on at church today? Because you knew that we could flip a switch and that switch would connect to the electricity that is supplied by somebody that you're not, you pay for it, you pay for access to it, but you don't produce it. And this is what God is wanting us to understand about the kingdom. So he goes on here, your father knows that you have need of these things. God knows you need food. David said, I have never seen the people of God forsaken. King David, Old Testament, I have never seen the people of God forsaken. So he says, but your father knows that you need these things instead, instead of worrying, instead of striving, Seek his kingdom. How many of you played hide and seek? Everybody knows how to play hide and seek in here. I see. <laughs> it is the, I mean the top by far game of the after school hangout. Those kids would rather play hide and seek than I think they would eat. And I made them finish a project one day and they didn't get to play their hide and seek game. And I was in the doghouse with those kids. All right, so instead, we are to seek the kingdom. Now, can, do, could you say that you seek the kingdom? Do you hunt for the kingdom of God like those kids do for each other? Do you look in the trash cans because that's one of their favorite places to hide? Do you look up under the table covers because they like to lay in the chairs and, and be hidden by the covers? Do you look behind doors? Do you seek the kingdom of God? Or has this even been a thought in our processes? The kingdom of God is available to us, as we're going to see here in just a moment. Instead, seek the kingdom, and all these things will be added to you. When we seek God's kingdom, when we're looking for God's kingdom, instead of looking, oh, the prices are going up. How many of you noticed gas prices went back up after Christmas? Uh-huh. How many of you know heating prices, have, fuel oil have, has gone back up? All right. How many of you have noticed food has gone up? Yeah, $4.59 a dozen for eggs, and we were paying under $2. I have people saying, when your hands start laying, I want on your list. I'm waiting for my hands to start laying. But when we notice and look at these things, and how many of you know, most of us in here are retired, but those of us who are still working, we're, we're getting more on the on the still in the workforce side. But how many of you know your check probably didn't increase to match the gas and the, uh, yeah, the hand. <laughs> and there is a need there. So you're having to seek ways to still keep the power on, keep food in the fridge, and you're having to make adjustments in other ways, are you not? So God is telling us that when the world comes at us, instead of seeking ways to cut back, seeking ways to adjust to meet what the world has given us, we are to seek him. We are to look for fragments. We are to get, not look for fragments, but we are to gather the fragments around us. We are to seek ways that he wants to bless us. So let's go on here, and it says... Instead, seek the kingdom, and these things shall be, not might be, not can be, but they shall be added, given to you. Do not be afraid, little flock. 
talking, Jesus is talking to his disciples. He's calling you his flock. Remember, Jesus is the good shepherd. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your father. How many of you, when you were kids, ever worried about food? You always knew your mother would have it on the table or your grandmother. Somebody in your family, there would always be food on that table. You went out, you played, you did your chores, you worked the fields maybe, but you never worried about food on the table when it was time to eat. So do not be afraid, little flock, for your father chose to give you the kingdom. Both of these scriptures, what Dean read in Matthew chapter 6, what we sang as the call to worship this morning is to seek first the kingdom of God. So maybe our issue is that we don't understand what the kingdom is. We are living in a democracy and we have a vote in what goes on, but in other countries, especially in dictatorships, they make the rules, they set the standards, and you have to live by them. And yes, we have laws that help do that. But you see in the kingdom of God, and especially in the book of Matthew, you can almost guarantee that the entire chapter of Matthew is about the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven, as we pray in, our, in the Lord's Prayer, we pray, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's Jesus' heart for us. So a kingdom is a realm. It is a royalty. And I've been through several different Bible studies with the Ten Commandments and uh the foundations of our faith and just recently with the temple that I had been doing online and all the way through scripture, God is looking to create a kingdom of priests and kings. How can Jesus be king of kings unless we are the kings that he is king over? It's not just the kings of the earth. He will be king over those. Every knee will bow. But God wants us to rule and to reign in this world. For many, many times I've had on the back of our bulletin about the ecclesia and who we are and what the ecclesia is. That we're not just a, bu a puny bunch of believers huddling together, but we are the government of God. That's what the word ecclesia means. We are to enact the government of God on this earth. And it goes on in that description by Rick Renner of the Ecclesia, which is the Jesus Christ is the first one to ever use the word Ecclesia in the Bible. Jesus. That's what he called us, his believers. At one time, we were his little flock. But as he grew up his disciples, he said, you are now my government beings. You are my kings, my priests, my rulers, my governors on this earth. And so when we see kingdom, we need to understand that you and I have an authority. You and I are part of a kingdom that supersedes this earth. Now I taught on the kingdom sometime back in the fall and I used the airplane of the 747 that weighed 900,000 pounds. And that thing can fly. It supersedes the law of gravity. So with the kingdom of God, you and I have the authority of God to supersede the lack and the destruction and the sickness and the disease of this world. That's why we pray. It's because something is wrong in the body of Christ or those that we have been asked to pray for, and we are to supersede Bring God's will into bearing. In the prayer, I use the illustration of a house that is leased. We are the leasees in this world. 
And when Jesus Christ came, he gave back to us the authority and the dominion. He said, all power, all power on earth, as here, and in heaven is mine. Now you go in my name. When we go in his name, that means that he has sent us to deliver something as if it were him delivering it. So when we pray for the sick, as it says in the, God, uh, in the epistles, that when we lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. Just like it is God's good pleasure to give you the kingdom, all these things shall be added to you. So it's not, we've got to get our mindset thinking kingdom helps. This is a new year. This is a new opportunity. And we have to renew our minds to think that what the Bible says. I grew up with a religious spirit. I grew up, and I'm not saying it was the church. It was, it was just a huge combination of things. But I had a huge religious spirit. And it wasn't until God got me outside doing ministry <coughs> among racers. And I tell you, as I walk through those pits, as I listen to people, I found more faith, more belief in the way the kingdom of God should work among people who wouldn't set foot inside of a church than I did those people that came to church every Sunday at a racetrack. And I saw more faith in amongst those people. They had a greater understanding of the reality of the kingdom of God and more respect for it than many churches I have been in because we've gotten so familiar with it, because we've been taught it and we just kind of succumb to it and we lack the power thereof. You see, there's going to be, and now is, a form of Christianity that has a form of godliness but lacks the power. God wants the power back because the power of God demonstrates him. If we can do it, we get the glory. If God, if it's something that only God can do, he gets all the glory. And that's what he wants to be glorified in us. So we have to adapt to kingdom thinking. Kingdom thinking. We have to say, okay, God, your word says I'm not to worry about what I'm going to eat. Prices in the grocery store are high, and they're getting higher. Eggs, four fifty nine a dozen. And if you go organic, mmm. Six ninety eight for organic, and my family went through a lot of eggs this week. So when instead of us looking at the things of the world, we now have to program ourselves and said, "Okay, Father, you tell me that I am to seek first the kingdom. Show me, help me, because that's what the kids do. Do you know where Junior's hiding?" Do you know where Caitlin is? I can't find Annabelle. And yeah, these kids can find some ingenious new places even though they hide there every week. We are to seek the kingdom. God, you tell me that your kingdom is here. I see the destruction. I, I don't see how I can make it. But you tell me that I'm to seek you. I'm going to look in places I haven't looked before. I'm going to look for ways I haven't thought of before. You see, that's what God wants us to do. Because he has given us a covenant. Through the blood and the body of Jesus Christ, God has ratified and we will ratify this covenant again. What does it mean to ratify? It means to make solid, to make real, to, it's almost like renewing your marriage vows. We are going to come and we are going to take the bread and the wine this morning as part of the covenant that Abraham made with God way back in Genesis. And that same covenant, because of Jesus Christ, the blessings of Abraham have come upon us. Abraham had protection. Abraham had friendship with God. Abraham sought God. He was willing to go to a place he didn't know. And that's what we're going to have to do. That's what we are doing. 
We're in a place in this church we've never been before. And look at what God is doing. Look at what God is doing. I am excited about what is going to happen this year. And I know that God is bringing his kingdom in more and more and more fullness. And so this morning, we are going to seek the things. And it is my prayer that we seek God first this year. Yeah. It's easy. Easy. You don't have to try to see the things of the world. We are experienced in that, are we not? Hello? Yes. We are experienced in the things of the world. But God says, if then the law of death brought this, how much more shall my people rule and reign? How much more shall you? Say, that's me. That's me. Say, that's me. That's me. Are you sure? Say, that's me. That's me. How much more shall you rule and reign in this life? That's what God wants. God wants a people who are seeking him so that he can add all these things to us. We have to put him first. Put him first in everything. And whenever you don't see a way, instead of fretting and fuming and worrying, stop. And I had to retrain myself to go from worry and wonder to say, okay, God, Nothing catches you off guard. Nothing catches God off guard. You knew this before the foundations of the world. You know where the provision is. You know where Junior's hiding, if we were playing hide and seek with the kids. You knew where Caitlin's hiding. You know where my provision is. Show me, Father, so that I can go and gather. Just like he showed Peter and how to catch a boat, two boatloads sinking full of fish. He showed Peter where to fish for the taxes to get a gold coin. God has resources. God has resources. And when we seek the kingdom of God, he wants to add to us. That's our mission in 2023. And if you remember the mission impossible, will you accept this mission? Will you take on the work and the seeking of God this year so that God can add all these things to us and we demonstrate him to the world that he is a good God. Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 We pray you were blessed by today's message. We have some amazing people who are willing to go to the four corners of this nation to tell you about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if something in the message today, in the service of the music or whatever you saw or heard, touched you, and you want to reach out to us, please do so. Our information will be here. You can reach out to the ministry at 704-473-4212. Or you can get all of our information at godspeedministry.com. We want you to know God personally, powerfully, and passionately because we are preparing to become his bride when he returns for us or when we leave this earth. So we want to make sure that you have that relationship with him. That's our main priority. It's not just to give you a head knowledge, but a heart knowledge to be adopted by the King of the universe and the Lord of Lords and to have all your sins washed away so that you walk in victory in this world. Godspeed ministry exists to connect people to God and then to each other in service to bring other people who are hurting, lost, worried, confused, and afraid into the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if that's you, make sure that you reach out to us. You can reach out to us in the comments, in the messenger, and again at GodFeedMinistry.com. We look forward to hearing from you. And if this message was a blessing to you and you are already walking with God and this just fired you up to walk even closer with Him, 
leave us a heart and let us know. And we'll see you in heaven. Godspeed.